Hi, this is Brett from Newfangled Audio, here to tell you about our new chaotic polysynth, Generate. Generate is the big brother of Pendulate, taking the chaotic oscillator concept even further with five chaotic oscillator types, polyphony, three wave folder options, and a wealth of modulation sources and effects. The focus of Generate is the chaotic generator section. Expanding on the double pendulum oscillator in Pendulate, the chaotic generator has five different options, each with a unique texture. The double pendulum generator is the same one found in Pendulate and is based on the physics of a double pendulum. It gives an earthy tone that smoothly morphs from organ-like sounds to chaos. The vortex generator will suck you in with its harsh, swirly, noisy overtones. Pulsar Generator is vintage, creating warm sounds with a scratched record vibe. The Discharge Generator is high voltage. It sounds like you plugged your speaker directly into the power grid. The Turbine Generator is incredibly unpredictable. It can be totally serene one minute and alien the next. It really comes alive when sync is on. In each generator, chaos amount and chaos shape control allow you to coax an extraordinary range of new textures from this module. These chaotic generators have two legs. We'll call them the root and the chaos. When chaos amount is zero, we only hear the root leg and the chaotic oscillator will output a sine wave at the keyed note. But when it's raised, the sound of the chaotic leg will come in until it's the only one you hear at 100. This action can be seen on the visualization behind the controls. When chaos shape is zero, the chaotic leg will be a sine wave at the interval to the keyed note. But as it's turned up, the dynamics of the chaotic system will take over and create overtones, instabilities, or even a gritty noise. The character of these artifacts is determined by the generator type. These two controls contain a range of possibilities and are the heart of this new method of synthesis. The animate control detunes the chaotic leg with respect to the root leg and has the effect of animating the sound. The oscillator sync button will apply a soft sync to the chaotic leg, creating more harmonics and shifting the perceived fundamental down an octave. Additionally, there are sub oscillators, one and two octaves below the root note. After the chaotic oscillator is a choice of three wave folders. The wave folder is a special type of distortion circuit that folds the waveform back in on itself, creating a large number of harmonics. The 259 is modeled after the one found in the Buchla 259 complex oscillator. The sharp corners add a lot of harmonics, but it's surprisingly natural sounding for such a jagged looking curve. The animated wave folder is based on a warped and animated sine wave and gives a smooth tone with an ethereal motion. The fractal wave folder is based on the fractal geometry of a specific mathematical function and can morph from very smooth to an insane number of harmonics. The drive control pushes the level into the wave folder. The folds control allows you to set the number of folds in the wave folding function. More folds means more harmonics. This doesn't need to be a whole number, allowing for a variety of intermediate shapes and sounds. Mix control fades between the folded signal and drive. Symmetry allows an offset of the wave folder. This powerful control can be used to add or remove even harmonics from the output and sounds great when modulated. Shape control modifies the shape of the wave folder and generally adds harmonics. In the animated wave folder, a special animate control changes the rate of animation. Finally, in the 259 wave folder, a cutoff control sets the cutoff of a low pass filter placed after the wave folder, controlling how bright it is. The final stage in the generate voice is a low pass gate which is a combination VCA and low-pass filter developed by Don Buchla. They are revered for having very natural sound and this one adds a lot of control as well. 
frequency knob sets the natural cutoff frequency of the low pass gate, but the frequency is also controlled by the envelope signal. The resonance control adds resonance to the low pass gate when the poles are higher than one. Finally, the poles control changes how much attenuation is applied to the high frequencies and how much resonance is applied. The low pass gate is controlled by a combination of an ADSR envelope and your playing. The ADSR has the standard attack, decay, sustain, and release controls, but you can also allow the low pass gate to be modulated by the pitch note using the key track knob, note on velocity using the velocity knob, and when MPE is active, the note pressure using the pressure knob. When pressure is 100, the ADSR is out of the circuit and the low pass gate is entirely under MPE control. Every parameter in Generate can be modulated by any combination of the modulation outputs in the modulation section. To route modulation, simply click the plus button under any control and the modulation outputs will turn into little knobs representing the amount of modulation from this output to the selected input. Clicking these knobs will toggle them to full scale, or clicking and dragging them will set an intermediate or negative value. Once you've dialed in a value, you can toggle between that value and off by repeatedly clicking the knob. If you right-click the knob or set it to zero, the route will disappear from the UI. Alternatively, you can start a route by clicking on a modulation output. This will make the corresponding knob appear under each control. These little knobs behave the same way as the ones that appear on the modulation outputs. Clicking the modulation output again will make unrouted knobs disappear. Finally, you can see existing modulation cables by hovering your mouse over a modulation output or by turning on Show Cables in the Settings menu. Generate has seven modulation sections. The Global Source, two ADSRs, two LFOs, a Sample and Hold module to add randomness, and an eight-step sequencer. The global section has modulation outputs for note velocity, mod wheel, key track, pressure, and timbre. Timbre is assignable from any MIDI CC, but when mapped to MIDI CC 74 on an MPE controller, will give you the Y-axis modulation. Additionally, the global section allows you to switch between mono, poly, and unison modes, and contains a selector for the number of voices and a legato switch when applicable. Also, a control for the bass octave of the synth, a pitch bend amount, and a portamento time. The Always button underneath the portamento time controls whether the applied portamento is always active or only when you're playing a legato note. In mono and poly mode, a drift control allows you to dial in the amount of oscillator drift, a common characteristic of analog synths that gives them a thicker sound. In unison mode, this becomes a detune knob, allowing you to explicitly set the amount of detuning in the synth. Finally, a stereo width control allows you to set the stereo width of the synthesizer in any mode. Similar to a modular synth, the ADSR sections simultaneously create three different modulation output signals. Full ADSR signal controlled by the attack, decay, sustain, and release sliders, an AD with no sustain, which only follows the attack and decay sliders, think of this as a muted pluck, and an ASR signal, which uses the attack and release time, but always sustains at full level as long as the note is being held on. By routing these different but simultaneous signals to multiple controls, you can create expressive sounds that wouldn't otherwise be possible. The LFOs take a similar approach, generating five simultaneous outputs from each LFO, allowing you to route a sine, triangle, square, sawtooth, and ramp wave to any combination of controls you desire. Additionally, you can select the LFO sync type, set the LFO rate in either beats or hertz, change the pulse width of the LFO, and set the starting phase. The sample and hold module is another source of randomness in this chaotic synthesizer. The noise output is just that, random white noise. 
The sample and hold output samples this noise at an interval determined by the beats or frequency control and outputs that random sample for the duration of that interval. The sample and glide output smoothly glides from one sample and hold output to the next. Finally, the glitch output jumps between 0 and 1 at random intervals, adding a very unsettling type of unpredictability to the sound of the synth. The sample and hold sync selector allows you to choose how these samplings react to your playing. Generate also contains an 8-step sequencer to be routed to any control. The step sequencer output simply outputs the value of the selected step. The glide sequencer output smoothly glides from one step to the next. The ramp down sequencer output contains a ramp from the selected step value down from zero. While the ramp up sequencer output contains a ramp up from zero to the selected step value. You can set the sequencer reset type, the rate in beats or hertz, the number of active steps, and the sequencer direction. Finally, of course you can set up each step value. After Generate's main synth voice are five effects, EQ, Chorus, Delay, Reverb, and a Routable Limiter. Each of these can be turned on or off by clicking the knob next to its button, or blended in and out by turning the knob. Generate's four-band parametric EQ allows you to set gain, frequency, and Q for each band. Additionally, you can select a band type from peaking, high shelf, high cut, low cut, or low shelf by alt-clicking the band. The knob to the left of the EQ selector button controls the global gain scale of all four bands. The Generate Chorus adds subtle animation to the sound, allowing you to set the mix, depth, rate, feedback, stereo width, and high pass amount. Generate Stereo Delay allows you to set the level, Delay time in beats or milliseconds, the feedback, delay modulation, and frequencies for the high pass and low pass filters. A ducking knob controls whether new inputs push the existing signal out of the buffer or let them stack on top of each other. When ducking is up high, you can use much more feedback than you normally would, even feedback greater than 100%. Generate's novel reverb algorithm creates incredibly lush sounds from a very small package. The mix control determines the amount of reverb which is mixed into the output, the pre-delay adds some space between the dry sound and the wet reverb out, and the decay time sets the length of the reverb tail. The mod control sets the amount of modulation applied to each reverb, creating a lush chorus sound and reducing the metallic sound reverbs sometimes get with very long decay times. You can set the low frequency and high frequency for the filters in the reverb tail. And the unique color control sets the resonance of the modeled space. Generate's wave folder and low pass gate can add quite a lot of gain or attenuation, so the output limiter can be set to adjust the level by plus or minus 24 decibels. Using the gain knob to overdrive the limiter can also add a real smack for the attack of your sound. You can change its characteristic from distortion to compression with the compress knob, and the high pass knob will let low frequencies through the compressor giving them more grit. Input and output level metering with a gain reduction meter let you know how hard the limiter is working. Finally, Generate's output limiter can be placed before the EQ, after the EQ, or after all the effects. When it's after the effects, it will make sure that the output level never goes above 0 dB, but you may get some pumping and breathing artifacts from the delay or reverb. When it's before or after the EQ, it can sound quite natural, but the following effects may add a small amount of gain, so you may need to pull the output level down a couple of dB. 
the output level meter will show you how loud your sound is right at the output. In addition to loading and saving presets, there are a couple additional settings in the top bar of Generate. Toggling the MPE button will enable the MIDI MPE mode and MPE specific controls. To use MPE, you must have an MPE compatible controller and plug-in host. Hitting the random button will randomize the plug-in settings. This is great for finding inspiration. The settings page contains a number of additional controls. The rendering button will turn the OpenGL engine on or off. After toggling this button, you must close and open the UI for it to take effect. The visualizations button will turn the animations behind each set of controls off if you find them annoying. The show controls button will turn the controls off, allowing you to vibe out watching only the visualizations. The show cables button will always show modulation routings in case you want them to be easily viewed. The voice lock button will lock the number of voices controlled, so that it will either be your preference of four or eight voices. The pitch bend lock button will lock the pitch bend control so that it's a consistent setting between presets. And the timbre MIDI CC knob will allow you to set which MIDI CC number is being routed to the timbre modulation output. Finally, you can change the default settings of Generate to any preset you'd like by replacing the preset in the 00 default preset folder in the Generate preset directory. We hope you enjoy Generate. Please share all the wonderful music you make with us.